In section 4.6, we're going to look at two uh, related uh, but different applications of the derivative. And just a little heads up, in winter 19 is when I made these videos and I changed the notes for this particular page, so you want to go print this page off from the course materials web page. All right, so we have these two graphs, and this is actually, um, this graph is actually a piece of this graph. So if you look at, um, say like this much of this graph, that is what this graph is. Right? It's like we're zooming in. So for example, um, right, this bit goes here, this bit goes here, and then that bit goes there and there. Right? So we're zooming in on that piece of it. And of course, I'd love to show it to you in Desmos where you can get a better sense of what's going on. So we have this graph, and then what we're doing is we're zooming in more and more and more and more. And what do we notice? Well, if we zoom in enough, the difference between the black curve and the red tangent line becomes, well, negligible. Right, meaning the black curve, right, which is actually the function, and that red derivative tangent line, well, it's a tangent line and the slope of it is the derivative, are basically the same thing. That's something called local linearity. It's saying that if you have a differentiable function and you zoom in enough, you will eventually have um, something that looks a lot like a line. In other words, the more, um, the further we zoom in, the more we zoom in, the further we zoom in, the more the function appears linear. It's not, but it appears so as we zoom in more and more and more. That's a very special concept. It's called local linearity. Local linearity. It's saying that if you have a differentiable function and you zoom in on a location, it will essentially be very close, close enough to a line that you can use that line to make an approximation. At least that's how we're going to apply it. So local linearity says, hey, if I zoom in anywhere on this curve, once I get to a certain point, it essentially looks like a line. Even though it isn't really a line, it looks enough like a line. That's what the local linearity means. Now I'm going to use that fact to approximate values. So, And this is a technique that we'll use. Um, computers use it. Lots of other things use it. Sometimes the function itself is kind of terrible. You don't really want to work with it. But you want to come up with an approximation. So let me give you the idea of what this is. So you're looking for what this value is right here, where that black dot is. And you're like, ugh, you know, it's just a lot of work. I don't feel like doing it. The, the function's really terrible to do. But I do have this equation of this tangent line. Well, I could use the tangent line to come up with an approximation. These two values would have the same x value, right? But they'd have different y values, but their y values are close. Maybe that's close enough for whatever I'm trying to accomplish. And I don't have to deal with the terrible... Um, black curve right here, that f of x that we're dealing with. Maybe it's just not good. And so I'll use the red um, tangent line. So I'll come up with an equation of a tangent line that's close to what I want. And then that'll, that tangent line will give me an y value, namely 0 0.4881, that's close to the actual function value, 0 0.4508. And that's linear approximation in a nutshell. For some reason, for whatever reason, you don't want to deal with the, the real function value, so you'll deal with an approximation based off of the tangent line. Um, this becomes particularly handy sometimes in three dimensions um, when we're working with more things in Calc 3. Alright, so let me bring this up down here. And that's what this is saying. So it's saying, hey, if you don't want to find the actual value, which is right here, right? So let's say you don't really want to find the f of x, right? It's terrible, it's icky, you just don't want to do it. What you can do is you can find a y value, l of x, 
based off of the equation, right, y equals l of x. Right, so L of X is the equation of the tangent line, but it's also this particular value. So it's if you want to think of it this way, it's like Y equals L of X, right? So Y equals L of X. So I'm looking for that particular approximate Y. Oh, here, let me write that up. Approximation. Approximate Y value is right there. So I'll use the the slope of the tangent line, excuse me, the equation of the tangent line, L of x, to find that. Well, how do we find the equation of a tangent line that's close to it? Well, what you do is you pick a value for a that's close to what you wanted, right? So a is close to what you were looking for, right, containing point a, right? So you say, okay, well, I want to get close to a, so I'm going to have the y value at a, Right, so this is the y value at x equals a, right? and then this will be the slope of the derivative. Sorry, I'm losing colors here. Slope. This is the slope of. Um, well, it's the slope of the tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line, right, which is what the derivative is. And x minus a is actually the horizontal distance, horizontal distance that you are from a to x. It's right here. Right? This is x minus a. Now keep in mind this is a static picture. In real life it can swing around, right? So that point right there can get closer and farther away from your a value. So a is right here, right? You take a, you build the equation of a line right, from that, and then you let that line get you your approximate y rather than the function value, right? So this is the actual value. This is the actual right here. And then this is the linear approximation up here, right there. They're not the same, but they're close. And so this right here, um, I should mention really quick, this is the equation, well actually I should say, I mean the whole thing is the equation of the tangent line, equation of the tangent line. Right, you're using the equation of the tangent line to come up with a y that is a linear approximation. Let me write that down. Linear approximation. And if you're wondering, like, how would I know the equation of the line? Well, remember, we've already learned this. This is point-slope form, right? That's all we're doing. Remember point-slope form. It's y... Um, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It's just for us, it's y minus f of a equals m, m is the derivative, x minus a. That's what we're doing. And then send y equals, just add f of a to both sides. Right. So all it is is the equation of a tangent line that we're using. But we're going to use this tangent line to predict, just predict y values for the function that are close to x equals a. Without actually using um, the function itself. In other words, I'm not going to substitute those values in. I'm going to substitute them into the line. I'm not going to substitute them to, in them into the actual function. And there's a lot of times that this might actually be practical. There are some functions that are just god-awful, and you don't want to work with them. And so you'll work with a tangent line because it'll be easier to work with.